India Maldives relationship is a much celebrated relationship there have been high level engagements and with me is a very special guest with me is a speaker of the Maldivian parliament and the former president as well of the country Mohammad Nasheed so welcome to Vion and happy to have you here in India my first question is how do you see the India Maldives relationship uh, our external affairs minister was in your country and now you're here in Delhi Well thank you very much and it is lovely to be on your show again and it's nice to be here in Delhi. Um I came here this time for the Raisina dialogue and Raisina dialogue has changed it's become so big 1200 delegates more than 80 countries and it's very 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 exciting. Now in the Maldives relations uh, this is another reflection of that. Uh it has we improved drastically since we came into government we have a india first policy uh, our foreign policy is india first as exactly in the same manner as india's foreign policy is neighborhood first uh, there is a credit line um, for projects that india is assisting us and the the government is submitting very good projects and they are all going very nicely the cultural exchanges uh, the capacity building work uh the students exchanges the university exchanges everything is happening and i think uh, we have a very bright future both our countries bright future but we have seen certain segments indulging in some campaigns the anti india campaign and you have taken a strong position on that will it help to curtail these campaigns and who do you think is responsible behind these campaigns well you know the people of the mountains I will never never back an India out campaign. I am very aware of that. I'm a politician. I'm saying this knowing that I will get more votes by saying it. Because we eat the same food, we watch the same films, we read the same books, we look the same. And why why would any sane Maldivian ask an Indian to leave no There are Indian families, there are Indian doctors, there are Indian teachers, Indian accountants, and and all the skill labors that is contributing to our economic development. For instance, Bank of State Bank of India has single-handedly invested in our tourism industry for the last fifty years. And look, you know, it's it's a billion dollar, billion billion dollar industry now. So why the businessman appreciates this? the people appreciate this and i i really do not think that it is a popular movement at all it's not a popular movement and you have taken your government has taken a lot of decision the we we saw the resolution by the president we saw you speaking in the parliament against it any more actions expected from the uh, government or perhaps the bill which has been talked about if you can elaborate on that as well well uh, uh, i uh, we suggested that there was there should be a, a, a legislation the penal code must now there is one on nuisance and discord and uh, harmony and and human you know ex- freedom of expression is not limitless it cannot it cannot uh, uh, engage or it cannot be used for hate crime it cannot be used to create discord it cannot be cr- used to create rifts uh, and it cannot be used for increasing xenophobia and that kind of you know unprogressive uh, backward uh, ideas and backward views so we thought that there can be a legislation that explains on where uh you uh, that that explains that people cannot create uh anger and rifts and hatred against our neighbors there is already in the quran is very clear on uh, you should love your neighbor mm-hmm. uh so legislation must also come and say you should love your neighbor mm-hmm. we can't shout at our neighbors mm-hmm. if you have a problem with a neighbor you can come here this country is for this country is a democratic country it has its institutions if president yamin has an issue why don't he come to a court here mm-hmm. and why why can't he if he thinks there is no issue it's just a fabricated view and he is fueling it just election ploy or do you think there is a foreign hand behind well, it can't be an election ploy because 
people don't want it. It can't be an election thing. Uh, uh, you know, where is the funding coming for the T-shirts? Where is the funding coming for all the trips that they make? Where is the funding coming for the campaign? I'm sure uh, our authorities are aware of that. Are you pointing out China? Well, uh, uh, I, to, to do, before I say that, uh, the police must open up an investigation. An investigation. Uh, now, coming to other aspects of uh, the relationship, the development partnership, we have seen a lot of development projects, more than 20, I believe. How do you see they helping in your country in terms of uh, uh, development of the country, especially in renewable energy and uh, the capacity building? Well, mm, you can't equate development to concrete. Development is not more concrete. Now, presently, I mean, thought development is concrete and got all this Chinese concrete to the country and created this huge debt. Now, if you look at it, the debt has no relationship to the assets created. The asset value is not even a third of the debt. China has intentionally in inflated the price of the projects so the business plan will fail. You will never get a yield to pay back the debt. Uh, from these assets, and then you default. And then they ask for equity. With equity, you lose land, and with land, of course, you lose sovereignty. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very grave issue. I mean, look at what is happening in Sri Lanka. It's so sad. Now, whatever India gives to us is very, very transparent. It goes through a proper tendering, pro tendering process. And therefore, we get the proper price. And you have to have a proper price. You know, when we were in government, when I was in, in uh, when we were government in 2010, I asked GMR uh, for a quotation for the bridge. And they, I remember they, them saying, giving us a quote of $76 million. It's now built for $350 million. Mm -hmm. The housing projects. A luxury apartment in Mali would, can be built for n the most 900 to 1,000 rupiah a square feet. Mm -hmm. These flats are 1,900 rupiah a square feet. And they're supposed to be low income. And therefore, the rent uh, will have to be 14,000, 15,000. But people can't afford that. So the government has reduced the rent. And then now the government is subsidizing the rest. And... So the flats are not going to give us the money to pay back the loan. Mm. The, actual, the actual cost must be found. Mm. And that is the money that we have to pay. Now, uh, uh, these small grant projects, the high impact projects, the projects that have a better impact on uh, our livelihood, they are far more important. I'll give you an example. Recently, Dr. Jayashankar um, came to Male to the Maldives, to Gan, and uh, to Addu. And he opened two projects. One was a 50, 60 million dollar uh, police academy. Another was a 500,000 uh, dollars uh, drug uh, uh, hospital, a detoxification center. The whole community was there with that Jashankar. No one turned up for the 550 million dollar thing. I, I, India is uh, uh, giving a lot of small grants, a lot. And, you know, I, I, I don't think what we're looking at is big concrete. For, for instance, uh, uh, for adaptation. We need nature-based adaptation, okay, hybrid adaptation, not just only nature. So these things can be done through smaller interventions than huge, big loans. Mm -hmm. So you are essentially saying that India was right by staying away from the Chinese connectivity projects or, uh, example, the debt crisis that has created. You gave the example of mm -hmm. Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, India was very right for not taking part in that. But, in, you know, India was never, never going to take part in someone else's uh, project. Uh, Dr. Jayashankar was saying that, you know, they do a self-assessment. And their foreign policy is based on their self-assessment, not based on what someone else is doing. Mm -hmm. 
And I think it was a mistake that we took part in the Road and Belt Initiative as well. Mm -hmm. A mistake. But talking about the Indian Ocean, you are at the heart of Indian Ocean. How do you see the security in Indian Ocean and how do you see practical cooperation like the Colombo uh, Conclave that can be taken forward? Well, uh, uh, in 2011, uh, we started all the National Security Advisors meeting every year. We also have a lot of uh, uh, exercises, trainings, uh, joint exercises with the, our Coast Guards and the Indian Navy and Mauritius and Seychelles and Colombo and Sri Lanka. Uh, and, and I think these programs are going and they're going appropriately and hopefully they will find a structure for itself. Uh, uh, and this would assist us in our safety and in our security. Mm -hmm. uh, so now coming to domestic politics, I mean, we know that now your country is gearing up for elections as well. Do you plan to stand for the elections? Also, there seems to be kind of infighting, at least from the outside, it looks like in your party as well. Well, uh, our party does these election, internal elections. Now, they have a primary to decide their president. Now, uh, if you, for instance, have a look at the United States. Uh, um, they shout at each other in their own party. That's how they get a person. And this person then goes to the, the nation. Now, it's, it's uh, upon our members to decide who they want to bring out as their presidential candidate. Uh, 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 I think <coughs> I have always said that I will take part in a primary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm hopeful that I will win. And you do not rule out that you would like to stand for the election in terms of what's happening next year? I don't want to rule out. I, I mean, our, if the people of our party, our members decide that we, that I should be contesting, I will do that. Uh, uh, I, I will do everything that would benefit our party and our country. You also want to change the political structure in terms of presidential to parliamentary. What's the main reason? Well, I've always thought that a parliamentary system was far appropriate for the Maldives, uh, for smaller countries especially, because there is more scrutiny, uh, things are done in the parliament. Right now, if a parliamentarian wants to question a minister, we have to give a 14-day notice. And by the time 14 days are up, the question is actually expired. So I think there's, there's more engagement, there's more interaction, uh, there's more scrutiny in a parliamentary system, and especially for a small country. Mm -hmm. So there was an attack on you. Uh, what's the outcome in terms of who was responsible? We, we're well, still to hear. We, we still haven't found, we've, we've found, the, the authorities have found the four people who, who was, you know, who had their hands on it. But who funded it? Who schemed it? Who designed it? Where did they get the technology for the bomb? Uh, you know, how did you detonate this? So there's a, 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 a thousand questions that still needs to be answered and, and, and I hope I, and I believe the government would. But any indication, who do you think could have been, why will someone target you? I, I don't know. The police must tell me mm -hmm. and the courts must decide. You've also been pointing out to rise of extremism yes. and you've been saying that there should be some kind of action against. What do you think is the worrisome factor right now? Well, our youth are getting alienated. Juvenile delinquency is so rampant. Uh, dropout rates are increasing. Uh, unemployment among youth is increasing. Drug is increasing. And all these together push you into these unnecessarily, unnecessary actions by the youth. Uh, and we must take care, we must try to build a better society uh, that is able to uh, assist our people, uh, able to serve everyone. Uh, and I think uh, de-radicalization de programs uh, and also uh, employment and training for the young people is very, very important. Mm. So last two questions. First, on the regional grouping. There is the SARC grouping, there is the BIMSTEC grouping. India, of course, is focusing on the BIMSTEC, but you are not part of that grouping. How do you see things going forward? Do you see Maldives becoming part of uh, this grouping, the BIMSTEC, given the SARC is not working? Well, uh, if SARC is not working, whatever said and done, 
we need to work together. Indian Ocean countries and Indian Ocean Rim countries need to work together. We need another platform. Mm, another platform, but would you like to be part of the BIMSTEC? Well, we need another platform. This is a okay. yeah. I wouldn't mind saying yes to that. And but uh, you know, we need a platform where we can cooperate and we can, you know, we can collectively decide on things. So my final question to you is: This is something that everyone is talking. And here in Delhi, we saw what's being discussed. That's the Russian invasion of Ukraine. What's your opinion on that? Uh, in terms of what's happening in Eastern Europe and also impact on your country in terms of the commodity prices? Well, uh, actually, you know, I really don't want to talk about other countries' business, but every country must respect sovereignty. And uh, war should never be a solution. Uh, I hope that Russia will be able to cease fire, start talking, and solve these issues amicably. Uh, uh, this has an impact on all of us. Uh, tourist arrivals, uh, food price, energy price, everything is going wrong. And, and it would be far worse than you know, if the war spreads into other European countries. And you know, they are war-mongering uh, countries and, and when they do fight, my God, they do fight. I mean, we've seen two world, world wars uh, during the last century. And we don't want to see another one. Why do we want to kill so many people? I mean, it, that's in no one's interest. I hope that they will stop. Thank you. Well, peace should be the future. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion and happy to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion.